thank you very much for joining us on the Voice of Job Secrets. This is Mark, and if you want to know more about the Voice of Job Secrets blog and podcast, go to thevoiceofjobseekers.com. You can press the uh, speak pipe button on the right-hand side. It will automatically adjust your microphone so that you can speak right into it. You don't have to do anything else except for press uh, the little button that says stop. Otherwise, uh, we thank you so much. We're coming down to the last couple of shows for the season. And I definitely wanted you to be a part of this conversation uh, with Rachel Martinez. Did I pronounce that correctly? Martinez, yes. Martinez, okay. Yeah. I had a little accent on the end, so I wasn't <laughs> sure. But, um, and that's M O N T A N E Z, correct? Yes, that's correct. Very good. She's a career coach, and she's also a Forbes career contributor. Uh, not of the Forbes Council, but she actually writes for the Forbes. Um, she specializes particularly not in just helping job seekers with their job search, but also uniquely, as we're going to talk a little bit about career burnout and career boredom. Uh, she also is a speaker as well. And she uh, gracefully has um, allowed me to record a conversation with her. So welcome, Rachel, to the show. Thank you, Mark. I'm excited to be here. So excited to share as well. Yes. Now, if, if you don't know, if you haven't noticed already, she has the new Florida accent. So if you don't talk <laughs> the way that she does, then um, you better get with it. <laughs> no, actually, Rachel, tell them where you're from. So I'm from the UK and it's funny actually because I'm working at a different office today and I came into the room and there's a big picture of the London underground. So that was quite funny. But yes, I'm from the UK. <laughs> now, was it was it accurate to the way that you know it or was it just it caught you off guard and thought it was funny because you thought maybe it was a mark of the London underground? No, it's a very accurate picture. It's um, it's the popular kind of Trafalgar Piccadilly Circus area. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about you now. I think there are there are lots of articles about burnout, um, but rarely is career burnout uh, addressed. Uh, what kind of led you down that path, if I can ask? Yeah, sure. So I got led down the path of career burnout because of the experiences that I faced as a new mom. I had my daughter in 2017 and I experienced severe sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. So it was along that time that I started thinking about stress and burnout and particularly sleep. And then I thought about my experiences as a career coach and I noticed that there was a gap between the wellness side of things and um, burnout and, and career progression and development. So as you notice that uh, it happened in yourself, you noticed that there were um, certain red flags that you came across. Um, of course, that there were some things that probably signaled something isn't right or there's some things that aren't right. Correct, Yeah. So what would be, what would you say would be one or two of those signals or red flags that showing that you, that there was burnout occurring or that you were in the middle of a burnout? Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I think when we think about burnout, sometimes we often kind of pair it with someone that's not enjoying their job and they're just overworked, long hours, and they're finding it hard to say no. Um, and there's the other side of burnout where burnout can actually occur mm -hmm. when you really are engaged in your job and you really love what you do. Mm -hmm. You're also prone to burnout too because you're so passionate about what you do and you're finding it hard to kind of disconnect. And mm -hmm. that's where I was. Um, I've been committed to the field of career coaching for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I came to, I was at a point where I had, I realized that I wanted to start my own business and I was very, very engaged and um, 
I was there was a lot going on and I was doing a lot, but mm-hmm. I was also burnt out. And I think for myself as a new mum, that's I knew that I was burnt out because I wasn't getting enough sleep and I was heavily uh, sleep deprived. Well, and I know what some people may be thinking that, okay, you, you're a working professional. How about if you are a working professional and you are mm. in the middle of a job search? Um, what would that look like? Yeah, it, it's, it's a very, very um, intricate, tough situation. And I'm glad that as a society, we're starting to speak out more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, as a job seeker, Everybody talks about, oh, you need to network. Networking is a great way for you to find a job. And we talk about resumes, which we're actually, a lot of top companies are now shifting away from resumes Mm -hmm. as the the, the main tool that they use to to attract a client and to filter through, you know, that first stage of filtering. Sure. Um, But kind of back to, to your question, it is very tough being a job seeker and also working And I think one of the things to um, bear in mind for job seekers is this element of self-care and how it needs to be embedded and integrated in your job search strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we know that mindset, um, short anchor, a popular, if I can just reference this real real, real briefly, short anchor, Mm -hmm. a popular uh, TED speaker from his work with working with Fortune 500 executives, and top global leaders, Mm -hmm. he found that success is partly 75% of success can be attributed to optimism and social support, aka mindset, Mm -hmm. where the other 25% is actually intelligence. So to me, that really shows the need for a self-care strategy when someone is looking for a job, because it is extremely taxing to be working full time and then to be spending those hours on, on job search too. Right. And so it's better to be conscious up front about how you'll be able to manage your load. Um, you know, workload is one thing and that's easy to be burnt down with that alone. Then you add mm-hmm. the extra stress of, that you want to or even that the pressure is on to find something else fairly quickly. Um, Mm -hmm. A question that I get very often, uh, probably the most asked question on my blog is, you know, I need a job ASAP. And, you know, it's interesting. I get asked that question and then I ask people, go ahead and follow up with me. Let me know how it's going. Mm-hmm. And very often, two or three months later, people will come back and say, well, I had to stop and take a break. And sometimes your breaks could be strategic, but they also have to be timely. Mm-hmm. So in your view, um, uh, how would one start setting limits to uh, their activity and and maybe anticipate how would they anticipate a burnout yeah that's a good question so how does one set limits and anticipate a burnout i think it's important for individuals to be realistic mm-hmm. about their situation so the first step really is being aware of where you are on the burnout spectrum mm-hmm. Can't set effective limits mm-hmm. and and reach goals if you're not if you're really if you don't have a realistic picture of where you are. Right. So the first step is is that. Mm-hmm. Secondly, is to take a realistic um, view and kind of synopsis on what's going on at work, mm-hmm. because how the brain works and how. Um, in order to be effective in your job search, yes, we need to be concerned about what's out there and mm-hmm. how you're applying for work and the opportunities that are out there. But we also need to manage our energy and uh, how the brain functions. So when you're thinking about what's going on at work, think about small wins, things that you can actually use to build your energy. Mm-hmm. So you have those two things going on in the background, figuring yeah. out where you are on the burnout spectrum, thinking about what's going on at work that can be a win for you to help boost your energy. Mm-hmm. And then the other side of that, going back to being realistic, 
is thinking about, and sometimes it helps to get an outsider opinion on this um, mm -hmm. through your blog and yeah. through the podcasts that you do, which are, which are really, really great for job seekers. Okay. Thinking about um, realistically, where, what are some realistic benchmarks and goals? Because sometimes, you know, when we're burnt out, it's hard for us to think about things from a realistic point of view. Mm -hmm. But that's really important so that you don't um, set yourself up for uh a situation that perhaps wouldn't be ideal. Does that kind of answer your question a little bit? Well, actually it does. And it makes me think about something we had talked about uh, via messaging <laughs> throughout this past year. Uh, the uh, Are the different personality types that are more susceptible to uh, burnout or uh, to reach a, you know, the end of the rope limit? Uh, at times because I know people who are introverts they're very conscious about how they use energy and what energizes them if yeah. you're not particularly an introvert at least on one extreme uh, you might be an extrovert on another extreme but you don't know exactly where that energy may start to subside Correct. And and I guess going back to that, a good way to figure out whether your energy is um, being depleted really and to, is to think about it from a, a sense of medical um, advice, for want of a better term. Mm -hmm. So we know that we need seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Right. But... If you ask certain individuals, and I've had this conversation with quite a number of individuals, mm -hmm. we tend, our body does a very good job of adjusting, right? So mm -hmm. when you're negative about your job search process, mm -hmm. it's easy for you to be even, to continue in that negativity. When you're unrealistic about your job search process, it's easy for you to continue that. When you start doing a job application, it's easy for you to ping out more. One, because you feel like you're actually being productive and, and two, mm -hmm. it's just easy to get in that trap. So going back to, um, going back to, I've, I've, I'm going on about, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Um, what was it that we were initially talking about? We were talking about? about how do you know, or how would someone who's an extra oh, yes. tends to burn out a lot of yeah. energy? Yeah, I'm getting so excited with the conversation. No, no, this I'm is great stuff. <laughs> Please, yeah, take your time. So, <laughs> so going back to sleep, you know that you were actually burnt out if you're not getting seven to nine hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. It really is as simple as that. It, it sounds really like, really mm -hmm. but it, 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 it from a medical standpoint i'm not a medical professional so i don't um my work is is never really hardcore focused on the medical side of things mm -hmm. i reference in my writings for forbes in the conversations that i have in speaking engagements i reference medical references but we know that the recommended amount of hours is seven to nine hours it's seven to nine hours per night mm -hmm. and there are uh, things that do happen to the brain and the body in terms of productivity, in terms of mood, in terms of memory loss, in terms of mistakes that occur if we're not getting the regular, the, the needed amount of sleep. So if we have a week where we get um, maybe five hours of sleep every night, that is a sign that the body is burnt out. And as mm -hmm. I was alluding to earlier on, we are very resilient. So it might be that you have just learned to um, deal with that and the body is dealing with it, but it's still a case of the body not functioning optimally. And, you know, you made me think of um, in my past life, I was a personal trainer. And oh. one of the things that people often do too, the other end is one end, most people don't work out enough consistently in the right amounts and they also don't eat uh, they also overeat the other part of that is that there are those who don't eat enough but they tend to overwork the themselves and begin their body begins to burn out before their brain actually tells them to burn out so yeah. uh, having said that which part actually comes first uh, for most people and 
it's almost the same for boredom. Uh, mm -hmm. Your body will tell you sometimes that you're about to be bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in case of burnout, your body tells you, but your brain does not recognize it because you're thinking about the goals, achievements, uh, or, you know, putting out the fire uh, kind of thing. So, um, you know, what should people look to as far as, and it seems like we're a answering the same question twice, but we're really not because there are two different types of signals and mm -hmm. where this time the brain is not telling you because it's, it's bent on uh, achieving, but the body is telling you and start to slow down. Uh, the crash maybe is mm -hmm. better term to look at. Um, mm -hmm. are, are, is the crash then a manageable uh, part of the uh, of the process? And um, is there a one particular strategy which might begin the healing uh, uh, aspect of it? Yeah. So, from what I'm understanding, you're asking whether there is a diff what what comes first, the body the body responding to the burnout or the brain and then how does one deal with the collapse is yeah that that, that's that because it, the collapse is going to happen it's going to be inevitable and unfortunately we are thinking in the midst of our in the midst of our crisis you got to keep going until the body just starts to mm -hmm. shut it down but we're not talking about what a physical uh it, well we are talking about physical but it's not in this case, it's, I was relating to personal training where the body will tell you, but there's other gotcha. signals that will give indication. Yeah, yeah. So I think for a job seeker, uh, I think it's really important to um, think about things from a, a sense of yourself, your company, and also outsiders, your support system. Mm -hmm. So it's particularly challenging when you're working in a culture that supports burnout mm -hmm. um, to then respond to the body and brain crash, for want of a better, right. a better term. Yeah, right. it's hard when you're in that culture. So something that you can do when you are faced, when you, you know, you're working for a corporate culture that perhaps is not um, big on work-life harmony, something that you can do is try to set yourself um, goals for your work, for your work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, and try to set goals that you can then uh, communicate with, with the manager or someone in your environment so that you have some support. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, for, for yourself, a thing, something to, um, I, I go back to the burnout spectrum, but it's really important to be aware of the different er elements of burnout and where you stand. Um, because once, so once your brain has learned something, it then sits at the back of your, of your brain ready for you to activate it. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge needs to be there for you to act in order for you to respond. So one of the things I, I often talk about with clients is being aware of the, the things that you're telling yourself. I'm okay. I can work another five hours. It will be okay if I don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. I can spend um, more time on job applications. You know, I can spend time on job applications rather than getting some sleep. Mm -hmm. um, those types of things, being aware of the self-talk. Yeah. So we've talked about the environment, the mindset, and then also your support system. Oftentimes with burnout, it's somebody else that uh, tells you, hey, you seem to be da 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 da. You're the or last your, to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or your manager might say, hey, you made a mistake on such and such. Or your coworker might say, oh, you know, it, it's often a third party. Mm -hmm. um, and when that happens, it's because you've ignored the, or, or not necessarily ignored that because that has a bit of a negative connotation, but you've kind of put to bed or you've, um, you have tried to uh, talk because of, you know, you've, because of the goals, you've tried mm -hmm. to out talk the, the self talk. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it takes that third person. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's great information. Now you gave us a great introduction. Um, to this idea that uh, we should build consciousness around uh, career burnout 
uh, pretty much saying that you, we need to pace ourselves, look for signals from our body and also from other people. Um, are there people that, and I know I did, we haven't talked about this yet, but I was thinking, are it, it, people should follow your column on Forbes because you do discuss uh, burnout as, as well as job search uh, advice. But are there others that we should look for studies from if, if people want to dig a little bit more into the practicals um, and may want to dig in deeper uh, about career burnout and boredom? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, I was talking to a executive of Deloitte who is in charge of human capital for the US. Mm -hmm. And we were having a conversation about Deloitte's new HR report. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I posed the question, how does my work with burnout relate to what you guys are doing over at Deloitte? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so your question was, how do we follow the trend of burnout and how do we learn more about it? Mm -hmm. I think we are linking burnout to organizations are linking burnout to productivity and retention. Right. So anywhere where there's a conversation about productivity and retention, there will tend to be certain trends and certain statistics that talk about burnout. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, kind of keeping an eye on productivity and retention. I know those are kind of terms that people that are in HR and learning and right. development perhaps will be following. The average job seeker may not be following those um, right. aspects. Right. So in terms of other places that you can link, look, so the American Psych American Association of Psychology, they mm -hmm. have a lot of um, data um, that supports burnout. Uh, Ramstead has uh, recently released a study on, on burnout. So they have a number of trends and statistic. I also like a site called Comparably, which is a great site for job seekers because it gives you an insight into the corporate yes. culture. Mm -hmm. um, Comparably had, did a study um, last year, which I covered for Forbes on work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So there are another place that you can look. That's another place that you can look as well. Um, and also the last point that I would mention as well to do with um, burnout, um, also the uh, Association of um, Psychology Today also has a number of good stats um, as well to do with burnout. Excellent. Uh, Rachel, how do people follow you? What's your preferred way if, if people want to know more about you and maybe they like to uh, seek out your services? Yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, that's a pretty good way to, to reach me. Or you can email me at rachel at sleep, then the number 10, T-O, the number 2.com, rachel at sleep 10 to 2.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. And of course, I'm always um, contributing to Forbes along the lines of burnout and career development. Excellent. Thank you so much for being part of the show today. Uh, that's going to do it. Um, the next episode after this would be our last episode for the season. Uh, looking forward to seeing you then. If you want to keep up with me, of course, you know how to find me. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, feel free to go to voiceofjobseekers.com. Uh, the newsletter will carry on uh, for the most part. It'll be once a month instead of twice a month during the summer. Uh, just so you know, but otherwise, uh, we'll see you next time for the last time of the season. Have a great day.